So in this first step, we're going to set up our page. And this is going to include setting up an artboard, setting up some guides, and starting some basic wireframe blocking of the page layout so that we can get an understanding of where everything will go in the page. So in XD here, I'm going to start on the wireframe artboard. This is the first artboard that you're going to see when you open up the practice file. It has some basic navigation blocked out as well as some guides. So guides are really helpful for placing things precisely. And to pull up a guide, you can just hover over the side of an artboard and drag it in. So I'm going to start by just creating some simple guides here. Maybe we'll go to 40 pixels inside. And this is going to allow me to place content. And you'll see that as I drag these, I get relative measurements in pink. So I can do that on the left side and I'll come over to the right side and place one there as well. Now, we want to start by building out the hero section layout. This is that main image with a main call to action uh, that you can see in the design. So to do that, I'm going to pull down a guide from the top and I'm going to set it about 400 pixels down from the bottom navigation. Um, and when I drag this, you can see I actually set that 400 pixels from the top of the page. So I want to look for the pink measurements on the left and that's going to give me the relative positioning of my guide. So now I have about 400 pixels. So with all of these guides in place, it allows me to precisely position shapes. So if I was to drag out a, a new rectangle shape, I'll come to the rectangle tool or hit R on my keyboard. I can hover over the top corner and it's going to pin everything and snap to these alignment guides. So now I have a nice background shape. I'm going to turn off the border and for fill, I'm going to come up and maybe select a, a gray, turn it down a little bit. And I want to try and remain consistent and use this gray for my image fills so that I can easily recognize when I have an image placeholder. So with that in place, we want to start adding in some text. You can see I've already set up some simple text blocking for the navigation and the logo and the button. This is all very rough. This doesn't have to be precise, but I can simply copy. In this next step, we're going to take a look at content aware layout. This is a set of features in Adobe XD that makes it really efficient to rearrange content and create really adaptive content for when we convert things like buttons into reusable components. Now buttons, uh, navigation labels, they often have changing text. And when you have changing labels within a com or an element that has a background shape, you want that shape to respond dynamically to the changing text labels. So here, let's take a look again in XD. We've moved on over to the end result. This is what your wireframe might look like if you finish the previous step. And here we're going to just start converting our blocks, our placeholder text blocks into actual text. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to pull open the text tool in XD and I can use guides even to nicely place my text. And here we'll just say explore activities. And I can easily resize this text box just by resizing it here. And we'll adjust the spelling and we can move this into place on the button. Now you might need to adjust your button size depending on how you set it up in the wireframe. Now at this stage, we can use the Option Alt button to measure out our spacing and make sure that we set our text in a good spot. Now we want to make sure that everything is grouped and in this case, Explore Activities is grouped with the button background. So we can call this our button. And that, that will be helpful later on as we set up components. So now that we have this button, if I was to change the text label here to something like save, you can see the background doesn't respond and doesn't resize according to the text length. So what we want to do with this button is with the group selected, we'll come on over to the property inspector and enable padding. And that's going to calculate that. All right, we're making some great progress on our website. In this step, we're going to take a look at adding assets like color and character styles and starting to build reusable components. 
In the previous step, we talked about how layout controls can help us build the foundation of those reusable elements. And so in your practice file, you'll see this before color artboard that I have selected here. Now this has a little bit more detail added to the wireframe, text elements, uh, different shades of gray, and, and some elements that are built out a little bit further. So we're gonna use this to start building in the high fidelity designs of our website. Now you can go through the process of adding the text to yourself if you'd like to, uh, but this is here just so that you can get a jump start and get a feel for components and assets. In XD, if we turn over to XD, you're going to see this colors and character styles artboard. This has a number of different colors pre-selected as well as character styles for the hero and the body content. Feel free to use your own selections here, but these are available and these are pulling from Adobe fonts and just general selection colors that have been included. Now, in a previous step, you may have seen me add a color here to the quick color um, swatch in the color picker. This is one way to add colors, but this is stuck and local to a single document. Now, there's also some limitations to this, so I'm gonna show you a better way to save colors once you've selected them into your assets panel so that you can reuse them and edit them throughout your document. So here in the character uh, colors and character styles artboard, we have all of our colors. Now if we open up the assets panel, you're going to see there are some components here that are coming from a final stage design. You can ignore these. You can even collapse the uh, section here. Now we want to open up colors and what's going to happen is once we select our colors here, we can just do a quick selection. We will pull this text color in, but that's okay. We can remove it or just simply keep it. But with all of these colors selected, I can hit plus next to colors. Once these are added, I can go ahead and double click and name these if I want to. So this could be my gradient. This could be my light gray, etc. All right. In this next step, we're going to keep pushing to a higher fidelity final design. And in this case, we're going to start adding images. So we have color, we've added character styles, and we started building our components so that we have great reusability as we go and build out further pages or sub subsequent pages. Now, adding images in XD is pretty simple. There's a few different ways to do it. And in your starter file, uh, practice file folder, you'll find a text file. And this includes a number of links to free Adobe stock images that you can license and use in your design. Now we're gonna be using them here as well. I have them pre-downloaded, but you can pause the video and go and download those now. With the images downloaded, we can simply start dragging them into XD. There's a couple ways. You could also save them as a library and pull them in from your library and you can get to your libraries in a similar way as we did our document assets. So from this panel, if we click back, you can come in here and click on stock images, for instance, or whichever library you have them saved to. So I have them stored in Finder, which is the file explorer on Apple computers. So I can start pulling in images from Finder and just dragging them in um, onto shapes and XD is gonna auto mask those. So let's start with the hero. If I pull open the layers panel on the hero section, you can see I have this um, image placeholder. There was an image here, I changed the fill. So this is just a simple rectangle and I can take the hero image and plop that in and be careful here because there is a gradient overlaid on top of the image. And this is just to add some contrast between the text layer and the background image. And you can do this just by drawing a rectangle over top. So this is my gradient layer here. And then applying a gradient. And you're going to want to maintain one end, probably the end furthest right in this case, as completely transparent. Everything else, it can be the same colors. The other color, you can play with the transparency to get the look the exact look that you're going for. And you can also adjust this on canvas. So if you want this to be brought in a little bit more, you can do that as well and just change kind of how the gradient looks. But for me, I like to keep a little bit of space just so that I can. 
In this final step, we're going to take what we've built so far in design mode and switch over to prototyping mode and start layering in some interactivity into our flow. Now in the practice file, you're going to see the finished work that we've been working on, but you'll also see three pages in series from homepage final to contact us. All of these have final in them just to signify that this is the last batch of artboards that we'll be working with and prototyping together. Now, XD has several different ways to prototype. We can go with really basic transitions and page-to-page -page, um, slides, which is great for mobile apps or just prototyping simple transitions in a wireframe. And then we can use component states like we talked about before and auto-animate and get really rich interactions that can add a lot of fidelity to our designs and help, it make, uh, help us make it feel more real. So we're going to take a look at some of these examples in here. And to start, we're going to turn to our homepage and go back to that hero section that we've been working on throughout the course. So to start, we can flip over to prototyping mode using um, our mouse or a hotkey. Now, once we're in prototyping mode, some of the interface is going to change. It's going to uh, give us tools that are contextual to prototyping. And now when we select objects, we're going to get this blue highlight and a blue arrow. And as we drag this blue arrow to various different destinations, it's going to create links between pages. So here on the Explore Adventures button, the main call to action, we want this to go to an adventure page. And so that is the second page we have set up here called Adventure Ed Waits. And here you can browse various different activities. You can see a featured adventure. And so all we need to do is with that button selected and make sure that the whole button group is selected, not just the text, the entire component so that you have a larger click area. Then you can grab the blue handle and drag it until it clicks and snaps to the destination artboard. Now on the right, you're going to see some interaction information. Here we have a tap trigger, which means when we click on the button with the mouse, uh, this action is going to be initiated. And we're going to use auto animate. Um, auto animate is selected by default here. I'm actually going to set it to a transition just so that we can see what a simple uh, page transition looks like. And we can use something like a slide left. We'll just use dissolve for now because it is a web page, so it's probably just going to reload um, and then.